This just in, Donald Trump is stating that China does not have any wind farms and that they only use coal-generated power. And saying that wind farms are bad for the environment and bad for the land and that they don't work. How strong is China in technology? Thank you so much for this opportunity to watch a such very beautiful, unique show. When it comes to China, there are topics that should be outdated since they say China is living in 2050, though it's just a way to explain that the world isn't catching up with where China has been able to reach. So, <laughs> let me get this straight. I don't want to assume that everyone knows what is happening in China. Sometimes I say, okay, maybe I'm the one who isn't aware of this or that and decide not to bring a video here whenever I see achievement of Chinese. But I don't want to assume anymore. So this compilation will be covering some of the achievements and also going back forth, like things that happened even in the past that could sound new to some of us, just like me, because I can't catch up. When you come to clean energy, it's not a competition between U.S. and China. It's a competition between human being and the whole world. We don't just have two countries, but we do just have one Earth. I think all the environmentalists will agree with me, except they are also American first. So they will accuse me as China first. It's a competition after all. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised that Trump is, is saying these things, but for all of you that don't know, China is currently the global leader in green energy. They have reached their green energy target for 2025, guess when they reached it? They reached it back in 2023. So let me tell you, I used to live in China and China has the most, I used to live in Inner Mongolia and Inner Mongolia has so many wind turbines. I'm not shitting you. You have to go and Google it. Google Inner Mongolia wind turbines. It is freaking amazing. China is so green. They make green look less green. I'm telling you, it's incredible how green that country is. And back in the day, it was overly polluted and the neighboring countries were all complaining. But now, China, thanks to the US trailing back on their green energy, China is now leading the global front on clean energy. This, this is crazy. So China has the Mongolian desert, that's super dry, most of the western part of China is livable. However, it doesn't thrive because it's so dry. It's very barren. It's hard to really build civilization there, right? So China decides to then forget that. We're just going to change our deserts into a place where humans could live. And that's what's going on in China right now. They are moving water from the rest, like different parts of China into the desert, planting trees and turning the desert into a livable place for people in the future. Now, let me tell you, I lived in China before. If they say they're going to do this shit, they're going to do it. They're going to get it done. You may have heard about the Great Wall of China, but have you heard about the Great Green Wall of China? Well, I'll tell you more. In 1978, China started a large tree planting project. And it's officially called the Tree North Shelter Belt. And you're probably wondering, why did China start this project? Well, simply because the Gobi Desert was expanding. Uh, and as well as the Taklamakan Desert over there on the other side. It's basically moving south. Uh, it brings these massive, massive dust storms as well. Here's an example of the dust storms, but I'll show you what it looks like when it reaches Beijing. And then over in Beijing, they'd have to frequently basically deal with these massive dust storms, which basically is, is bad for air pollution. You can't breathe, you can't see things, and dust gets in your eye and stuff. But the larger issue was the loss of soil and drought. Basically because the wind, it blows the dust onto the farmland and then it kind of strips away, firstly it strips away the top layer of soil. Uh, it also blocks the sunlight so it doesn't get any nutrients either from the sunlight. Uh, this is very difficult for farmers and then ultimately less food is produced. But if you take a look at the map again, this is about 27% of land. Uh, so it's a massive, massive space that this bloody desert takes. <laughs> 
and the government basically had no choice but to stop the spread. So what did China do? They started planting trees, and lots of them, to try and make a green barrier to stop the desert crossing over. And the initial goal was to finish within 50 years, uh, so by 2028, uh, but they made a mistake. And their new goal is to now finish in 2050, and I'll tell you what the mistake is. So back when they started, they basically just planted the same tree again and again and again, uh, which wasn't very effective because this made the forest weak. And unfortunately, in 2000, a disease ravaged through, killed all the poplar trees, one billion in total, and this set them back 20 years. They also had water shortages because fast-growing trees need a lot of water as well. Some trees also just died and they had to be replanted every three years. And because they only planted one type of tree, uh, there were less birds, less plants, biodiversity in general. And so the forests that they were planting were less useful to the actual ecosystem. So what did they learn? They started to plant native trees uh, instead of the fast growing trees. And they decided to make use of the land in other ways by adding solar panels. Uh, and this did two things. Of course, you've got the solar generation, but the solar panels also blocked wind and helped trap moisture. And they focused overall on quality versus quantity. They put better trees in strategic locations. As you can see, China's project is still ongoing and it's set to be completed in 2050, if there isn't any other mass sort of wipeout of trees. But China's lessons are being learnt by the rest of the world, because Africa has also started its own green wall initiative. And you can see this stretches all the way from Senegal all the way down to Djibouti. And they're learning from China's mistake, with China's help, of course. Well, the first thing is they're respecting the biodiversity, so they're planting native trees. They're using local plants that need less water, they're also harvesting rainwater when it does land. And here's a charity which regularly posts about the progress that they're making. And hopefully they can make fast progress with this because over 45% of Africa's land is affected uh, compared to just 20% of China's. Everyone knows that the Sahara is huge. Uh, I'll probably do a dedicated video on Africa's green wall uh, because there's lots going on uh, and they're having some issues with funding and stuff. But hopefully you guys learned something interesting. Uh, I didn't know this before, but now I know. And now you know. This monster of a dome just went up in China. It's the largest inflatable structure ever built over a construction site. And it's not just for show, it's China's new weapon for air pollution. Construction is messy, dust, noise and debris all floating through the neighbourhoods. That's not good. So what they've done, so what they've done is they've put this massive dome up and then it seals off all the chaos and it has its own environment inside. I'm talking temperature humidity covering 20,000 square meters that's three football pitches in length the dome uses air pressure to stay up so it don't need no no support beams nothing like that it's obviously got a ventilation it's got filters and it's got mist jets inside to keep the air nice and clean and this ain't just a one-off china's now thinking about doing this all the time and to be honest i actually think that this is quite smart and this is a win for China. What do you lot think in the comments? Did you know that China actually built a 200 foot tall air purifier that actually cleans the sky? Let's talk about it. So this right here is the huge tower. It looks like a big pillar. This is in the city of Xi'an in China. And this thing actually cleans 10 million cubic feet of polluted air every single day. So by now you're probably wondering how this pillar looking thing cleans that much polluted air. Well it starts off with the polluted air being sucked into greenhouses surrounding the base of the tower. Then solar power is used to heat the air up and as the hot air rises up through the tower it's cleaned by multiple layers of filters. And in no time all that polluted air that was received through the base level is now clean air that gets emitted out of the top of the tower. Now because of the amazing technology behind this it is actually reduced pollution in the area 15% to 18% and this right here is actually just the prototype so just imagine when they actually get the technology finished I mean could you imagine one of these in every single polluted city I'd like to hear in the comments below what you guys think about this and I'll see you guys in the next video bye this is why China is 60 years ahead in farming because they grow crops without pesticides you might ask no chemicals what about weeds the answer weed blocking fabric Farmers lay this black cloth over the entire field. It blocks sunlight, so weeds can't photosynthesize. No light equals no weeds. Simple as that. And the dead weeds? They decompose into natural fertilizer, feeding the soil instead of harming it. Now you might wonder, isn't all that fabric bad for the environment? Surprisingly,
Surprisingly, no, it's not plastic. It's made from biodegradable material, breaks down in months, leaves zero waste. Without pesticides, fruit trees activate self-defense. They produce more antioxidants and protective compounds. This makes the fruit richer in flavor and nutrients. And because they grow slower, the sugar builds up naturally. The result? Softer, juicier, sweeter fruit. No chemical shortcuts, just nature helping nature. Chinese farmers use wisdom, not poison. They protect the soil, boost yields, and grow healthier food. Now tell me, would you give this a try? Did you know that China built a railway network in a shifting desert? That sounds like a mission impossible, but Chinese engineers made it. The Takli Makan Desert in Xinjiang, northwest China, is the world's second largest shifting desert. 337,000 square kilometers, almost the same size as Germany. People living around the desert used to be so isolated because of this geography. Some had to walk for 10 days to visit friends living in a nearby prefecture, but it's no longer so. In 2022, a loop railway network that surrounds the entire desert was completed. Now people there can go to the other side of the desert within a few hours, and the train tickets are so cheap too. Now it's much much easier for people to get a job, to travel, to get education, or healthcare in other places. In China we have a saying, 要想富, 先修路, if you want to get rich, build roads first.